sweep away my pain bring your healing to my heart help me love once again cares and worries get me down fear of failure fills my day When I'm lost and all alone Help me Lord to find your way People knocking at my door Strangers seeking love and care Never let me turn them down Teach me gently how to share Children come into my life With your laughter and your song When will I become like them? Teach me Lord to sing alone So dear friends, in the last session we are speaking about the Theophany experience of Elijah and analyzing the episode we were trying to see the meaning of this Theophany experience and when we think of the Theophany experience we may ask why God gave such a theophany experience for Elijah. There are a couple of things which we can give us an answer. First of all, we have mentioned it is a corrective of the Canaanite notion of theophany. Secondly, we can say Elijah was given this gift of theophany experience to show that he is equivalent to Moses because the theophany that occurred to Moses is known for all. In the same way, Elijah is parallel to Moses. And it is often said, Moses is the lawgiver and Elijah the prophet par excellence and therefore as the prophet par excellence Elijah is given the gift of theophany and the theophany experience was given to him in order to strengthen him in the moment of weakness to strengthen him and to deepen him in his occasion in his faith and so on Therefore, he had come away from his occasion in a way to hide in a cave, away from all kinds of troubles. But God came down to him and he gave him this great gift in order to make him courageous. Okay, it is here that we have to remember the words spoken by Yahweh to Joshua. In chapter 1 of Joshua, we find it. We have mentioned it a couple of times now and then. And in chapter 1 of Joshua, we hear God said to, jo God said to him, I will be with you just as I was with Moses. And again, be courageous. Do not be afraid. The three things the abiding presence, the great courage, and also the lack of fear. All the three go together. And now it is to be applied to Elijah, Elijah too, here. We can say, 
he is assured of the abiding presence of yahweh he is given the great courage and his weak faith is strengthened all this is done but we see the theophany experience got practically no impact on him and what does he do he is still trying to hide in the cave even if he has seen all this he doesn't feel a change within and therefore god's words come to him again elijah what are you doing here and this second question has a different meaning we can say because earlier he was thinking he cannot go he want to die and so on then he was strengthened by god's theophany and then why he is not accepting or he is not receiving that strength that faith the courage and so on and elijah is not at all convinced of all this and therefore what does he do he repeats almost the same complaints that he gave earlier i was so jealous about you your name but all the people had abandoned you only i am left and now they want to kill me also and if i to die who will be there to praise you o lord that is implication and of course god who knows everything will give an answer and the second question again is raised by him ahab and jezebel especially jezebel want to kill me i am afraid to go back into israel if i go definitely i will be killed hence i am totally afraid of these two people i don't want to go back to them and then it is said god suggests him the remedies and of course the will uh, read the text and find out what all remedies are given by the lord okay the three complaints we already uh, mentioned about it in verse 13 the second question of yahweh what are you doing here and elijah sanser is given in verse 14 i have been very jealous second then i alone am left and so on verse and they have they are trying to kill me they are seeking my life to take it away and i am fed up with this job that is implication and the answer is given by the lord in verse 15 go return on your way to the wilderness wilderness of damascus okay far beyond israel that is what is said you go to damascus and what is he supposed to do there when you arrive you shall anoint hasael as king over aram aram in syria therefore he is asked to go to damascus and anoint hasael as the king of syria and also you shall anoint jehu son of nimshi as king over israel therefore elijah is to anoint hasael as the king of syria and in the same way he is to anoint jehu as the king of israel okay and what is implication also you shall anoint sorry and you shall anoint elisha 
son of Shaphat, as prophet in your place. And then he says again, Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the hand, from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Okay, here we find the solutions given. And what are the solutions we know? He had mainly three complaints and practically all the three complaints are solved. For one complaint, I am fed up with this job, I don't want to do it anymore. Before the theophany, he had made the complaint. After the theophany also, he repeats the complaint that means he is afraid to go forward. And now God plays his part and he says, okay, then anoint Elisha in your place as the prophet. Okay, you can retire, that is the meaning. You may retire now and give that place to Elisha. Therefore, one problem is over. I am fed up with job. I am unable to proceed. The second, he said, all the people have gone after Baal. Only I am left. And it is my seal that leads me forward. And everyone else have gone away, gone astray, fell into apostasy. And now God says, see, I have kept 7,000 who have not kissed Baal. What is the meaning? We can say, Elijah was saying, all have gone after Baal. But Yahweh says, there are still 7,000 whom I have kept and they have not kissed to Baal or adored him as God. Therefore, 7,000 still remain who have not accepted Baal as their God. And then why do you say, why do you say that? Everyone has accepted Baal. That's a question. Therefore, an answer for this question also is given. And the third complaint was this. Okay. I am afraid of Jezebel and Ahab. They have pledged to kill me. And what will become of me if I go there? They will kill me. And who is the reason for that? Ahab and Jezebel. Therefore, now the Lord says, or he gives an answer for this. And what is he supposed to do? He is to go to Syria and then anoint Hazael as the king. And when Hazael becomes the king, he knows that, or Yahweh knows that he will come and attack Israel. Therefore, many people will be killed in this attack by the Syrians. And that is one side. On the other, he is to go to Samaria and anoint Jehu as the king of Israel. And we know Jehu will kill the people who have not been killed by Hazael. When it is said they come to kill, the implication is mainly the leaders of the people and the members of the royal family. They are the first ones to be killed. 
Therefore, Kassel will come and attack Samaria and he will kill many in the house of the king of Samaria. And now Jehu, who takes the power, will kill the rest of these people. In short, we can say all the opposition, the terror and the fear caused by Jezebel and Ahab will come to an end because they will have no more power for them. Things will change and God causes the change and thus he gives the clear answer for all the complaints. And now I hope the answer given by, or sorry, the question asked by the Lord is so meaningful at the second time. In spite of giving you this opportunity to know God, your Lord, then why do you remain here, afraid of everything? And now the answer is given in a clear manner. And what is to be thought about it? We know God always strengthens everyone whom he has called. But even after being strengthened, if somebody is adamant and remaining always afraid, then God will remove such people and give space for somebody else. And that is what happens here. It is time for Elijah to retire, so to say. And then the rest is, is to be accomplished by his successor, and that is Elisha. And therefore, the answers given make clear that God will execute his plan and that is left to himself. Nobody else can do it. And this is the main thing that we can derive from here. And why such a theophany was given to him? We mentioned earlier, it was to, it was to strengthen him, it was to make him courageous as in the case of Joshua and it was also to make a corrective in the notion about theophany. All these things we have analyzed. And we can also say that the theophany is given to show that the choice of Elisha is the will of God. And it is not the will of Elijah. Elisha is chosen according to the command of the Lord and that is the working of the Lord himself. That's what we can say. And again, the theophany experience is also a means to show that Elisha is the chosen one or the discipleship of Elisha is approved by Yahweh. In other words, we can say the legitimation of Elisha and his call is made here. Therefore, the Theophany experience would point out all these factors. That's what we can think of or what we can speak of. Therefore, let us see. This is the way how the things proceed. And thereafter, we will find the working of Elijah is different. And Elisha is received as his disciple. Okay, now towards the end of the chapter, we also find something uh, different from other situations. While Elijah was passing through a field, people were plowing the land with oxen. 
and Elisha was also plowing the land at the rear end. And what does he do? He threw his mantle on Elisha and said, Okay, come with me. And Elisha was surprised to be recruited in this way. This is a unique way of recruitment, we can say, in the entire Bible. Usually, the recruitment is being done saying, Okay, follow me. Think of the ways how Jesus recruited his disciples, the apostles. They were fishermen, okay, mending their nets. Some were uh, collecting taxes and some were doing some other business and some were fishermen helping out fishing. All these things were there. And therefore, now he understands it clearly. And here we find Elijah is given the direction by Yahweh that he can take Elisha as the disciple. And this kind of recruitment by throwing the mantle on the person is unique. And whatever it be, Elisha was ready to follow. But he said, okay, let me prepare a banquet and then bid farewell to my people and then come away with you. Then, verse 20, he left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. To kiss the father and mother, that would imply to bid farewell to them. Okay, I will go and bid farewell to my parents and then come after you immediately. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? You can do as you like, no problem. I have selected you, that is all. Therefore, you may go back. And he returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah. Okay, then and there, he prepares a meal, a meal of goodbye or saying goodbye. And now we find Elisha becomes a full flood disciple of Elijah. And that is the story that we find here. Okay, therefore these are the important um, messages that we can derive from this particular episode. We have already mentioned the purpose of the Theophany. It was to strengthen Elijah, to show that Elisha is selected by Yahweh or according to the will of Yahweh. Then the Theophany experience makes Elijah, similar to Moses, or the comparison with Moses, child. It also manifests the power of God. God's power supersedes every other power. God is there, even far beyond. Okay, the whirlwind, earthquake, heavy thunder, lightning, fire, cloud. All these are usually considered to be the forms of theophany. But now, a new apologetical insight is given. Theophany is really in the depth of one's heart, the deepest silence. And that is a theophany experience. And according to the story, we can say 
Silence itself is a form of theophany. It is in this way that we are to understand all these incidents narrated here. And hence, theophany that is narrated here is a polemic. It is uh, refuting the belief of the Canaanites and on the other side, here it is narrated in such a way that Yahweh is giving a corrective to the traditional notion of theophany. And that is what we can see. Now, this is something unique, as we mentioned, with regard to the call of Elisha as the disciple of Elijah. Okay. Now, we go to chapter 20. And here in chapter 20, we find the people are, the Syrians are coming to attack Israel. And that is narrated here. The Syrians, they made a coalition of 32 kings. And they come to attack Israel. And with a very few number of people, King Ahab was able to defeat them because of the power of God or because of the help of God. And that story narrated in chapter 20. And we'll find he mustered the young men who served the district governors 232. After them he mustered all the people of Israel, 7,000. And therefore, 7,000 and 232 people are in the army of Israel. Whereas, the 32 kings had tens of thousands of soldiers mustered. And how can they go and fight? But here, the prophet assures King Ahab that he will succeed. And now we see they go to fight with the people. And we will see when they go to fight with the people, they, each one of them, they killed their opponent. And the Arameans fled before them. Okay, therefore, because of the use of tactics and so on, they were able to win. Of course, it is the power of Yahweh at play, not their military power. And thus, Arameans had suffered a very great slaughter. And then we see, Arameans, the Arameans were not ready to be defeated in that way. They mustered the army again. And then they uh, said, so, okay, the servants of the king of Syria said to him, the gods of Israel, they are gods of the hills. And therefore, if we fight with Israel on the hills, then their gods will prevail over us. We will be defeated. Now, therefore, let us go and fight with Israel in the plains of plains of Jordan and then we can easily defeat them and that is the way they wanted to meet with or encounter with Israel and even in this situation we see God intervened. A man of God appeared, approached and said to king of Israel, thus says the Lord, because the Arameans have said the Lord is a God of the hills, but he is not a God of the valleys. Therefore, I will give all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. They encamped opposite one another seven days. On the seventh day, battle began, and Israelites killed 100,000 Arameans and the rest fled away. And therefore, we see the Arameans were 
thoroughly defeated by Israel. And this is what we find. And hence we can see there is a great support given by the Lord. And they were able to uh, destroy much more powerful than they, the enemies of um, Syrians or Armenians. And that story narrated in chapter 20. Okay, now we conclude uh, this session. And in the next session, we will deal with the story of Naboth and his vineyard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your love that you have revealed to us and for the love that we share together as your body. Grant us the grace to be alert to your promptings and live in endless love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.